Hello, Booktube, and welcome back to the library tour of Doom. <laughs> An endless library tour being conducted by Lord Ganesha and myself to take you through every book on my shelf. Every book that ever has been on my shelf, probably every book that ever will be on my shelf. Uh, and today we're going back to 1934. And we are, we are nodding our head in the direction of March Mystery Madness, a Booktube event in which a whole bunch of booktubers, including myself, are hosting a celebration of all things murder mystery, all the different kinds of murder mystery. And this, we go back to uh, the mystery of the Cape Cod Tavern by the great Boston writer Phoebe Atwood Taylor. <laughs> this is an A.C. Mayo murder mystery, a, a uh, set on Cape Cod. Uh, and A.C. Mayo was a character that this author stumbled upon and really, really struck gold with. Uh, he is sort of a a handyman and uh, omniscient savant who lives on Cape Cod, the old Cape Cod, as everyone always mentions in these stories. Every character, no matter what age, is always telling some newcomer off, only you'd known the Cape in the old days. And that is still an absolute reflexive thing that readers do, or and that Cape Cod people do to this day. It's 2021. <laughs> it's almost a full century after this book first appeared. And yet, in every decade of those intervening years, every person who lives on the Cape has told some newcomer, ah, you should have seen the Cape when it was in the old days. <laughs> There's always some weird demarcation line, some thing that happened that turned the Cape from what it was in the old days to what it is now. <laughs> and that has always been true. As far back as anyone writing about Cape Cod ever bothers to mention it, in the 1880s, in the 1850s, and certainly in the 1930s, uh, Phoebe Atwood Taylor knew Cape Cod really well, and uh, AC Mayo is her uh, Sherlock of the of the sand dunes. Her <laughs> is her Cod Sherlock. Is he solves murder mysteries, and he's become famous for it. Uh, this is I can't quite remember if this is like the third or the fourth AC Mayo story, but they go on for for a long time after that. And a lot of you of a certain age will remember this whole series in a very distinctive mass market paperback set back in uh, 30 years ago, maybe even 40 years ago, very distinctive white spine mass market paperbacks of all of these. And I believe a bunch of this author's other work as well, but, but certainly all the AC Mayo books. Uh, I used to have that set forever and ever. I used to recommend it to people who come in it, to, the, to the bookstore looking for a certain kind of murder mystery. Uh, and I had that set even though... Uh, it wasn't really that well made. It was distinctive, but it wasn't really that well made. The, the bindings were terrible. You really couldn't beat those books up. You had to be very delicate with them, and I'm not very delicate with my books. Whereas this is a 1934 hardcover. This is what somebody in a bookstore would have seen. It's got the, the rationing, uh, the, the, the cheap, almost pulp paper. Uh, and what was... Do we have the... Uh, the original price this was 75 cents and this copy was actually sold at the old corner bookstore in boston back when it was a going concern as a general interest bookstore and then it the old corner bookstore is a is a, a literary landmark in its own right parnassus corner is a book that is in this room that's largely about that bookstore uh and it, it went underwent a whole bunch of uh incarnations as it got harder and harder to be a general interest bookstore in downtown Boston. Um, this was when it was, when it was a tightly packed, but still burstingly stocked general interest bookstore. Uh, and this is, this is the story. It's, it doesn't start with AC Mayo. He is a little bit enigmatic. It, I mean, he's, he's outgoing. He's an old school Cape Codder. Of a, of a type that in the 1920s and 1930s was a figure of both affection and comedy. Uh, they talked in a very certain way. Uh, they had their own way of doing things. A very laconic, down east, archetypal New Englander. Uh, and this book doesn't start off with him. It starts off with the aunt of a, of a character in the, the town where Azimeo lives and works, Weeset, and the fictional town of, of Weeset. Uh, uh, the aunt of one of those people has been summoned to, to the little town, and she encounters not only a, a love affair that she would rather squash quickly, but also uh, mysteries start to start to crop up. And this is the only AZ Mayo murder mystery that I have in one of these hardcovers. I, I, oh, there you go. 
<laughs> oh, this is the fourth case. Look at that. It says it right on there. Okay, yeah, this is the fourth the fourth AC Mayo novel, the Cape Cod Mystery, the Cape Cod Players, that that the mystery of the Cape Cod of the Cape Cod Players and whatnot. Um, I have a couple of mass markets of this author in those white spine uh, form that I will will get to them on this uh, library tour of Doom. But this is the only hardcover that I have. It's, it cropped up at the Brattle, and I grabbed it uh, because I love reading these things. They are they are very much a murder mystery that you can revisit. Uh, I don't know how we would classify them today in the murder mystery genre has ever so many more uh, subgenres today than it did in 1934. Uh, in 1934, this would have been a uh, whodunit. This would have been uh, just a the, where a mystery where the the key goal is the trick of guessing who the culprit is. That has become sort of a, a, a an RNA that runs through all types of mysteries now. I think this would, these would probably be considered cozy mysteries. Now, even though Az Mayo in his in his seafaring days had adventures all over the world and is ready in a tight spot, I still think this these would probably be considered seafaring or not seafaring cozy mysteries. But there's also a, a strand of murder mysteries that really plays off location. They're usually still cozy mysteries, but even so, the Cape Cod of the 1930s comes through wonderfully in these books, just wonderfully. Actually, the 1930s just do, does just in general. You have to listen carefully for the echoes. Like, for instance, the aunt that we're talking about who starts off this book, we start off in, it, she narrates that uh, that opening chapter, and she herself, A.Z. Mayo is famous when this book takes off. He is known in Cape Cod circles as a sleuthing marvel, but she's also famous. Uh, as one time uh, tennis star 30 years ago who made headlines who uh, out golfed the Prince of Wales and whatnot and one of the characters in the opening chapter of this book mentions that she she could be could be found swimming the Hellespont or hiking in India or messing around with the Hitlerites in Germany in 1934 when that could have been a very dicey thing, but nothing, no in, implication like what we think of it today. Uh, the, that reflection, those reflections come up all through here. The, the types of cars, the types of household goods, types of attitudes. Uh, and uh, Phoebe Atwood Taylor very much wanted to show all sorts of rustic and, and uh, quirky New Englanders, especially Cape Codders, uh, but also to create a kind of carefree atmosphere, even though they're murder mysteries. It's the early books. I think it, it's sort of petering out by the time you get to this book, and you can really tell. You can really see the tone of it. The earlier books are a little more serious. Uh, the, the longer the series goes on, the more frothy and carefree it gets. The more, very much, you get the sense as the series goes on that they are more and more written as vacation books. As books to take to Cape Cod. Or to find there. But in... in uh, sort of carefree vacation week where you don't want to think about anything gruesome. <laughs> and all I can think about when I was, when I was reading, I, I read this, I got this at the Brattle uh, probably two or three years ago uh, and reread it right away. I put it, I think I probably hauled it on this channel, reread it right away. And uh, all I could think about was the contrast between this and 21st century murder mysteries, most of them where if the first chapter were narrated by this charming and utterly captivating aunt figure, we would then see her murdered in a gruesome way. The description of it would take a whole chapter. Maybe that wouldn't happen in Cozy Mysteries, and maybe that's what this is. Maybe this is an ancestor of Cozy Mysteries. I'd like to think so. Uh, but I can't recommend these books strongly enough. I don't have all of them. I wish I did. Uh, but I, I have a few of them, so we'll be getting to all of them in the Library Tour of Doom. <laughs> uh, but in the meantime, that's your book for today. It is the, uh, uh, what was, this was the fourth one? The Mystery of the Cape Cod Tavern. The tavern in question is a, is a watering, has become a watering hole for writers and wannabe writers. So there's a literary aspect to the mystery. Uh, but anyway. I'm going to wrap this up. That is your library tour of doom for today. We don't want these library tours to get to 30 minutes each. We don't want them to become dissertations on the book. <sighs> so, so I'm going to wrap this up at under 10, and I will see you soon. <laughs> Thank you, Booktube.